Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. I am so excited to be here. My guest, Ty Goodwin, is here, and she is going to tell you who she is and what she does and how she can be of service to you. So, Ty, take it away. So Ty is going to tell you a little bit about who she is and what it is that she does and how she can be of service to you. So Ty, take it away. Well, I am Ty Goodwin. I am a vision midwife, a liberation coach, and a visibility strategist. And what I get to do is I help experts, healers, coaches, and spiritual entrepreneurs I help them expand their vision and their visibility so they can have a bigger impact into this world. I decided to use my superpowers for good. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. So what did you do in the past that you could transfer into this beautiful space? Yeah, I spent the last six years building a marketing agency. Mm -hmm. Um doing lead generation, you know, building quizzes for people, marketing automation, love that stuff. But at the end of last year, I decided I wanted to bring more of what I wanted to see into the world. And that was helping people who are like me, the healers, um, the the guides, the the wise women. We need more visibility. We need to be seen more because of all the things that are happening right now in the world. It's time for us to, to take center stage. And now I get to help us do that. That is so powerful because, you know, um, you and I talked in the green room and we were talking about how, you know, I had made that shift as well. And it, it was something that I already wanted to do always. When I started, I wanted to do that. Yeah. But I let fear kind of get in the way of, you know, going all in is what I say, coming mm -hmm. out of the spiritual closet. That's what it was for me. Cause it was like, okay, I want to interview, you know, I want to interview the witchy people and I want to interview, you know, the healers and the channelers, you know, and the, the, the mediums and the psychics, you know, I want to interview and talk to these people. And so I made that shift last year and I started doing that as well. I said, you know, I'm going to interview spiritual entrepreneurs because I started looking around and I didn't see a lot of people interviewing us, mm -hmm. you know, and I love to have the conversations. So it, I felt like it was a win-win. So when you decided to make that shift, you know, into helping um, that particular group, you know, what do you, how do you feel it affected your business? Well, first I had to come out of my own kind of spiritual closet, so to speak. And what I mean by that, I'm a big believer of practicing what I teach. I have never been one of those marketing people where I'm going to show you how to make six figures because I watched a video on YouTube and now I'm going to tell you how to do it. Like, I hate that. Um, but there's so much of that, you know, that's out there right now. I practice what I teach and I could not continue to tell my clients to show up authentically and share your truths and, you know, build these authentic brands and relationships. And then I stay quiet about who I am and what I wanted to be recognized as in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like, I have to go first. So I have to start speaking my truth and telling my story and building my personal brand. Mm -hmm. And now I can take what I've learned and take what I'm doing. And I can duplicate that in the work that we do with our clients. Mm, that's so powerful because, you know, a lot of times so many of us, and I'm going to say us, so many of us um, struggle in that area, you know, and I know that one of the reasons why many of us struggle in that area is because, you know, of the religion that we were brought up in, branded and brainwashed mm -hmm. and manipulation and all of those things. And so um, to me, once you get that out of the way, it opens up a lot more doors for you authentically. Yeah. Can you speak yeah. on that? Well, well, absolutely. You know, I well, I call it sacred shackles, Tammy. You yeah, know, a lot of the beliefs, ooh, I like that. that yeah, and that's that's one of our signature topics because I'm also speaking, you know, now, and that's one of the things we talk about, like sacred shackles, like those beliefs that we were brought up in. And I was just talking to our group. Um, we have a, a mastermind called Audience and Authority, and I was just talking to them the other night about how, you know, a lot of our religious beliefs teach us to have imposter syndrome. 
Yes. Right? You, you can't, you gotta be humble. You can't really talk about who you are. And, and to be clear, I, I see the imposter syndrome as something different. Like people say, oh, it's you feeling like you're an imposter because you feel mm -hmm. like you can't, can't do it. And I say it's the opposite for some of us. Imposter syndrome is us dumbing our light down yes. because we're afraid of somebody being mad at us. They're not going to like us. They're going to challenge us or, you know, somebody's going to, you know, be offended because yes, I think that I'm just, that's, that's being an imposter too. Yes, it is. Right? And, and we're taught that because we want to be humble. We don't want to call attention to ourselves, you know? Yeah. And, and that's no way to, it's it's not the way if you really want to have bigger impact and you really want to get your message out there in this market, you cannot be that way. You have to own every inch of your brilliance yes. and you have to be willing to speak up, to advocate for yourself, to advocate for other people. And that's not going to happen if you're, if you're shackled to these old beliefs that say you have yes. to play small and you can't show up and be who you are. Yes, I love that. I have a friend that says, um, what did she say? Speak up, speak out, speak often. I Thank like it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I thought that was great, you know, because that is that's really to me is truly authentic, you know, because when you're doing that, you know, it 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 takes you to a place and it also allows people to see you and connect with you in a way that is no other way possible. You, you know, know, it also, yeah, it, it also allows people to see themselves. Yes. You know, yes. I've, I've started writing about, you know, um, my experience of deconverting from Christianity, which, you yes. know, shocked some people. And, and even now people be like, oh my gosh, you just started this journey. I'm like, I've been on a journey for 20 years, yes. you know, of, of deconverting. That was when I first threw out all the Bibles, like literally I threw them out. I but, saw that post. <laughs> yeah, right. And so so people are like, oh, you, you know, just starting. No, we're not just starting this. But the reality of it is, is that there are a lot of us, there are a lot of women my age, you know, 50 and over, um, who have realized that we kind of been duped, you yep. know, we kind of, you know, all the stuff that we were told to believe and, and made to feel about who we are. Um, how we connect spiritually, it has not been working, has not given us the freedom, the joy, the peace that we see. It miserable is what it did. It's very oppressive. It's <laughs> it's very, very oppressive when you like I said, it's sacred shackles, right? Yes. The 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 book promised us freedom, but it actually shackled us to stuff yes. that just did not work. I was gonna say in so so much, you know, the more that I study, you know, because I like I said, I still read the Bible, but I read a few different versions. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's not like the only thing that I read, mm -hmm. but, um, but I, and I actually have like an apocrypha one that I got and I started looking through that a little bit. And that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I have read the lost books and I actually had a copy of them years ago, but, um, yeah, I had a situation and so I don't have it anymore. <laughs> 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 I left it in a storage and you know how that goes. Yeah. So, I don't even well, believe in that, but yeah, well, so. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say, good for you for for reading and and digging into that. I think that's one of the things that you know we talk about in liberation coaching. We talk about the the five steps, right, to yeah. really getting free. And the first step is curiosity. Yeah. You know, and that's where my journey started with this whole thing. As I was like, you know, well, and why I threw away the Bibles is because I'm like, there has to be something different. Like this isn't working. And my simple prayer at the time was, I want to know you for myself. Yes, that was it. And, yes. and the question was, you know, why isn't this working? Yes. Right. I was going to church. I was heavily doing all the things well, of doing all the things and not just for two, me and yeah. my children. Yeah. Not just and my ex-husband. Yeah. Well, for all the, uh, sorry, for all the worked women in ministry and, you know, uh -huh. uh, we worked in ministry. Our children worked in ministry. Yeah. I was, Every time you turn around, you know. Um, brother so and so, sister so and so, you know, can you can y'all we need help? Something, 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 something. You know, we we were servants. Listen, I was servants, I was praying, I was choir, worship team, all that. Band, you know, I, I did all. But yeah. what got me was I realized that every Sunday, and I was dealing with a lot of depression, had you know, some abuse things in the background, yeah. and yeah. none of the prayer, none of the fast, and none of all that stuff was working. Right. But then I looked around and I realized that the other women that I was in church with, it was the same thing. Like every Sunday, 
Lord, help my husband. Lord, help my job. Help my finances. My car broke. My kids acting up. Every single Sunday, the you same prayers. And I'm mm -hmm. like, are you kidding me? Like, we've been doing this for how long? <laughs> like, come but, on. And so and other I, people before us. Oh, exactly. Because I watched my mother and my grandmother. Like, we watch all these people do the same thing. And I'm just mm -hmm. like... There's not there's something not right or my favorite way of saying it the math is not mathing right with this well, like it's if, adding if up. You think about it, it's insanity. We keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. I mean, come on. Yeah, and and, and, and it, it just doesn't out of line. What? It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I just got tired. And I said, you know what? My first, I'm not totally saying that I'm not believing in you, but I'm saying I don't believe in this. Yeah. So show low. So I want to know you for myself, and I was willing to do the work, you know. And yeah. so I started reading. I started asking more questions. Yes. Um, I started learning about different things. I started talk trusting myself more, because yes. that's and that's one of my pet peeves with Christianity, which is the religion that I came out of, is that you know they teach you lean not to your own understanding, right? So you're, you're taught not to trust yourself. Yes. Um, and so that was a huge thing of how do I step back in and trust my intuition? How do I step back in and learn to listen, you know, to myself? Because they taught us that God was outside of us. Oh, absolutely. Instead of we are really God, we're God. God is yeah. in it's, it's It's in us. And so they, yeah. they did not want to salute our divinity. In the words of Florence Gobelshin, they did not Mm -hmm. want to salute our divinity especially yeah. not us brown people black yeah people. that's that's a whole other other thing I, I, i've been we could probably do it i want that oh my goodness well i shared this um i watched this video somebody shared with me um and i'm gonna paraphrase but i heard the guy say so i didn't make this quote up but i heard him say it and it blew me away he said the he said so here's christianity and what you want me to do is you want me to ask for salvation and expect salvation from the same God who told me to obey my masters while they were abusing and killing my family. Mm -hmm. that's, that's deep. It is because it's so deep. The How same person that man, said, man. Yeah, exactly. The same person who told you told who told me to obey my masters is the same person you now want me to place my life on and ask that same person for salvation. I said, wow. Never thought of it that way, but it's mind, it's like mind chilling when you think about it. It is because I used to tell people, I said, I, I, I love God, but I ain't no Christian. I said, because to me, what Christians are is the people that hung our behinds on the trees in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I said that that was my mind of that. And so I was like, no, I'm I'm not. Mm -hmm. I can't go there. Yeah. Which, yeah. Now, do I love some good gospel music? Yes, I do. <laughs> Listen, I'm never going to stop loving Fred Hammond and his That's voice. That's what I'm saying. Never going to stop loving Fred Hammond. I, 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 I was listening to him the other night. I will trust. Yeah. And, and, things, and we can you know? take, you know, when we're, when we're listening to our own wisdom and we're really doing the work, we can take some of that right the yes. energy of it you know yes. um the, the the spirit of some of it and we can also spit out the bones you know you know um, that's what my grandmother used to say my grandmother used to say that all the time she said mm -hmm. she said to me one day i'll never forget it she said tammy eat the meat and spit out the bones mm -hmm. and yeah. i used to say at first i was like duh <laughs> <laughs> why would you eat the bones <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah you're right it's like you know but we can do that in everything we can you know, because because people always want to do because where i was i was actually at this appointment and i met this young lady because that's what we do <laughs> and we were talking about how everything is so compartmentalized mm -hmm. you know you go see you go see the kidney doctor over here and then you go see the neurologist over here and then you go see the cardiologist here you know, you see your rheumatologist here, and then you see the oncologist here, and any other ologist you need to see, you see, you mm -hmm. know, and everybody's giving you different shit. Nobody's paying attention to what you already taken. Yeah. Sometimes they 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 give you two different doctors give you the same thing. Yeah. You know, and it's like that same way in life. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're so busy with compartments in our life.
mm. you know, till nobody's really, really looking at the hole. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it, it, it just, it boggles my mind to see, you know, how we do. Yeah. You know, and, and, and for me, like when I started coming out of the spiritual closet, girl, I got so much hate mm -hmm. and it was really hard for me because I am not a person like that, you know, like, like I don't really even have hate in me. You know, if I say I hate somebody it's real bad, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm that kind of person, uh -huh. but, but I do have a Scorpio, you know, I'm a Scorpio, but, um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, I had told somebody, I said, what are you talking about? One girl's going to be talking about you the devil and, and you need Jesus. I said, apparently you do. <laughs> <laughs> apparently that's, oh, that's, that's your thing. You need that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. People, well, you know, we've been indoctrinated, you know, with a, a lot of different things. Yes. Um, and if you've built your entire life, if your entire life has hinged on something, Yes. It really does become hard to step away. And listen, I I I I get a lot of people now that want to, you know, debate and and argue and and I I understand because when I was in it, I was in it. I was I was just thinking about this story the other day, um, earlier today, Tammy, that I was so entrenched when I was in college. I took a women in religion course. Oh Lord. And I took the course because I was gonna let them know that Jesus was the only way. And I was because I knew they were in there talking about the God is this and that, and I was gonna set them straight straight. Can I tell you, after about three weeks in the class, the teacher said, can you just write a paper and not come back to class? Like <laughs> that's how, like, that's how antagonistic I was. Cause I was raising my hand. I was everything they said. She's like, can, you can just write a paper. You don't even have to take the exam. Just write a paper and do not come back to class. That's Right. So, so I get it why people are, are very defensive and they're going to fight for Jesus. And I'm like, all oh, this, I'm like, yeah. I, I, so I have a lot of, um, have a lot of compassion yeah. because I know what that's like, yeah. but I also know that a lot of those people that are mad or that they're angry about it, it's a, it's fear because on the back of their mind, they know that something's telling them, no, it's not right. You know, no, that that's not true. The fact that, you know, you were the fact that somebody's telling you, you were born into sin and a person that created you sees you as sinful and as unworthy. What a horrid thing to tell people, first of all. But there's something within us that knows that that's not right. If you think about it, think about the fairy tales. Hansel and Gretel got burned up in the oven. I mean, come on. Even well, the Bible... Yeah, well, a lot of the Bible story, uh, stories are, are not much like that. I'll tell you that's one thing. That's what I'm my saying. Sister, that's, my, that's sister, what... my sister and I laughed about this because I said, we've been duped. So, you know, the story about the Tower of Babel. Yeah. And, you know, it, it says, you know, that, you know, God, you know, said, oh, if they if they work together and they build it as high, they're going to reach us. So yeah. let's scatter their language so that they won't yeah. be able. And we've been, our whole lives, we've been, oh, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, and one day it dawned on me. There's no way they could have ever built anything that high. Because it's not physically well, it's not physically possible. How is it physically possible for people on earth to build a tower that's going to reach God? So if you think about it, who the fuck wrote that thing? Exactly. It's like they and, can't even it's and, like and what it was, was it was just like you said, it was used for that purpose. It, it and, and and Neville Goddard is a new thought yeah. teacher. Oh, I love um, him. Yeah, well, he's the, he's the first one that really helped me appreciate the Bible because it was the first time I felt like I had permission to realize that the Bible it can, it can be seen as literature. It was mm -hmm. never meant to be taken literally. Because if you take it literally, there's some lies in it, like the whole Tower of Babel. Like, really. Really? He's going to confuse all the languages so that people for thousands of years are not going to be able to talk to each other and have this animosity because you don't want them to be able to build something that's going to reach heaven, which is physically impossible. We got spaceships now that can't even reach it. So all the way back then. I guess the other part of that is, I mean, who's been there to come and tell about it? You know what I mean? Right? It, it, but but that's the that's the, it's the fairy tale. It's the stories. And listen, what what I believe because somebody says that you talk about how you don't believe this. Well, what do you believe? Well, one of the things I do believe is that it was man telling stories to try to explain what they knew the best they could. 
And so that's why when you look at the stories in the Old Testament, even the New Testament, everything is so man-made. Yeah. The yeah. only way that God could have done this was to do was to was to do this. Yeah. Right. The only way He could have paid for your the, sins was to give God a body. The big God. Yeah. The all powerful, all knowing. He had to put some. He had to put his child on a on a cross and you know tack him to the cross and bleed it. Do you not realize how archaic? that is but if that's all you know if you think about it you're right because just now i thought about the story about isaac oh my gosh you know putting uh, abraham putting the son down you know and and then then god stopping him from uh killing him and all this kind of stuff and and i did not even think about that until you just said that oh that's one of my right. pet so stories. so god got, that's how god got to make sure that you're gonna be obedient you know, I, well, I, that one of the things that bothers me about that story so much is I think about Isaac. Think about the terror. If this is a true story, right? Think about the terror of watching your parent over you with a dagger, yeah, to sacrifice you. That messes your mind up for generations. Exactly. So when you think about the like the thing, my my other pet peeve, and I know we're we're getting to our time here, but let's my I'll so I'll share this pet peeve that this irks me because I hope this will help free somebody who's listening. Yeah, yeah, is the story yeah. of Job. Yeah. You yeah. know. So first of all, it talks about how God and the devil are having this conversation. I'm like, how the hell? Like we we're not worthy enough to see God's glory, but the devil gets an audience with you so that you're having a conversation. Look at my servant Job. And the devil says, well, he's only he's only praising you because he has all this stuff. So God says, let me prove a point. Let me take all the stuff away. One of the things that God takes away, he kills, kills all of Job's children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember having this conversation with my mom and I said, okay, so he was proving a point with Job. What about Job's wife? Those were her children. She had nothing to do with this. So you mean to tell me this all-knowing, all-powerful God killed her children to prove a point to the devil? Yeah, I don't believe it. And then my mom said this. She said, but but at the end of it, Joe, he gave him more kids. I said, I know you still want some bullshit now. Okay, I didn't say that to her, but I was thinking it in my mom because she's my mom and I was respectful. But I mean, that's some bullshit. So hmm. you're telling me that if you lost me as your child, you, you would be, be okay, okay you just because have you got some more kids. You be okay because <laughs> you got some more kids later. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the God that you want me to bow down to. I'm, I'm not, no, I, I, it doesn't make sense. Who would do that? that? Who would do that? Why would a, why would a loving, all powerful, all knowing God do that and still expect to be worshipped as all loving and all knowing and all powerful? Doesn't make any sense. And See, I, and I do that. And you just, you just set somebody free because to me, I have not even, and I've thought about this stuff mm -hmm. a lot. I actually had opened up a group because I was like, I'm sick of it. But um, I've thought about this stuff a lot, but that, that was a whole nother level, you know? Cause I mean, cause, cause it does, it makes you, you wonder, cause you, you know, you think about these things, you know, mm -hmm. growing up, especially when you listen into the stories and stuff. That sounds far fetched, you know what I mean. But then you say, "But it is supposed to be God, yeah, the really powerful." Oh wait, I forgot. Not that God, <laughs> <laughs> the small one that that can't can't heal and can't do nothing. That oh one. my gosh, the small yeah. one that 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 they come and talk to every Sunday about the same thing because I guess yeah. he's retarded and he don't remember. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. When you start, when you when you finally start putting it together, it's very freeing. Because, oh, and and one of the, one of the other things I realized too, uh, we spend a lot of time trying to justify and rationalize why God doesn't answer us. Oh yes, you know, yes. You know you're, we're praying for things, and oh well, you know you you asking for the wrong reasons, or it's because God has something better for you, or because you need to learn this lesson, and all these ways we rationalize. And I and I remember thinking, well, if I'm praying for God to stop abuse from happening in my situation why 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 is he not responding and so now i'm trying to justify because you help that team win their their football game you help sister someone there over there someone so over there find her parking spot and get her keys but i'm like can you stop this dude from kicking my ass but, look, but i'm getting my behind beat and you won't stop. <laughs> right 
And you want, and, and not just for me as an adult person, but as a, ch a children that are praying. Okay, what what about the children that that that, that die and they say that God needed another um. Oh my gosh. Another flower in the garden or some crap. Uh, I'm like, he ain't got enough. I mean, he can create some more. Seriously. Like, you, but you but have to realize how ridiculous Do you have to it take is. your child for that? I mean, that just makes no sense. I've never. Yeah, understood. we read, we rationalize and we try to make it make sense. And here's what it did when it freed me. I, because here's what happened. I said, you know what? If I have to rationalize this, it's good. It crushes me. But when I realized, oh, He's not answering because he doesn't exist. Oh, okay. It was very free because otherwise I'm trying to figure out well, why doesn't God answer my prayers? Why am, you know, why is he doing it for somebody else, but he's not doing it for me? There must be something wrong with me. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, he never exists. He, he doesn't exist. Oh, it has nothing to do with me. He's not real. It was the most freeing and liberating thing because then I could say, okay, had nothing to do with a personal vendetta, had nothing to do with me being generationally cursed, had nothing to do with any of that stuff, which now frees me to say, okay, you know what? How can I heal this? Yes. I ain't got to beg and plead and wait for some, wait on somebody to, to rescue. And no, what can I do to heal this? That is so real. Changed my life. It had to, because you think about it, I used to say, why do people go to the altar on Sunday? You go up to the altar, right? And you call for Jesus and whatever it is that you do and wherever you do. But you go to the altar. And I used to say, they take their bag of shit to the altar with them. And they sit it down. Jesus, Jesus, you know, pray. You know, Lord, I know you can do it. You can fix it. You can help me. You can heal her, you know, whatever. And then they get up and they pick up their bag. And take it back with them. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, so why do you go? Yeah. I actually told somebody that one time. I said, why do you go? Because yeah. when you come back, you still depressed. You still still got all kinds of stuff going on. You know, I have, yeah, I have no idea how to fix any of it. That's what I was gonna say. And, you know, it don't matter how many Bible verses you memorize. Because trust me, I, I I I was on that track. Let me let me quote this scripture. Let me. It wasn't changing anything. It wasn't healing me. It made me that dopamine rush. Wait, you were speaking the word? Oh yes. And it's, just it's speak funny. the word on it, sister. Just speak the word on it. it. It's it's funny. Somebody um on Facebook told me they wrote and they said, "Well, for all the mockery, you're mocking God. He's gonna come visit you." Because you're mocking him. I said, you mean to tell me all I had to do was mock him all these years for him to show up? <laughs> I would have mocked him years. If I knew mocking him was going to get him to actually make himself visible to me and show up in my life in a major way, I would have mocked him years ago. Because I've been praying, fasting, crying, speaking in tongues, dancing, worshiping. I've been doing all of that, reading Lame the Bible, the Lord. And, it, and he never showed up. <laughs> but mock him and he'll deal with me? Oh, that's why didn't you tell me sooner? What you say? I'll wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been waiting. That's so funny. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, I did not actually think that this was how this conversation was going to go, but it's been <laughs> so fire. <clears throat> and as you said, it's been so free. Mm -hmm. You know, because because you know, it's is this conversation can be um difficult <laughs> to have. Yeah. You know, but I, I, I'm here for it. You know, I love having these conversations because people need to hear. And it's 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 like I was watching uh what was I watching? I was watching Outer Range. Mm -hmm. It's on uh Amazon. So it's like got the second season. And this show it's like a big hole that they mm -hmm. jump into and they can time travel. Oh. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And so they've time traveled, and so we're watching the show, but we're watching it in like like three different dimensions. Okay. But, and it was so interesting. So like it was one thing going on in this one and one thing going on in this one. And this one came from that dimension to this other one. Wow. So it, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> have to. It's so interesting because like the one girl goes back to, the, she's a Native American mm -hmm. and she goes back to like 1886. <laughs> but yeah, the crazy know. thing is, in the when she went back to 1886, she thought she was there for four years, 
But in our time, she was only gone for like a few days. Oh, wow. She went missing. That's good. She, uh, she had been gone for four years. So the time difference was different in the different dimensions. That reminds me of um one of Octavia Butler's books. She's a black see. science fiction writer. Um, I think it's Kindred. I think that might be Kindred, where, you know, the more yes, 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 slavery. Yes. And she's there for a longer period of time. Yeah, yes, so it's yes. very interesting. I'm gonna have to yes, check that out. Yes. It's on Hulu. Okay. Yes, yes. I'll check yes. that out. Yes, yes. You, you gotta check it out. Because yeah. it, when I started looking at it, I was like, okay. Because the woman, <laughs> she she stumbles into 1886. Mm -hmm. And the there's another woman that's there where she's speaking English and they're they're about to shoot her behind. But then she speaks a little bit. Of oh, don't give me the spoiler. Don't give me the spoiler. <laughs> so, but, but the thing I was saying about it was when you looked at that and you saw that and you saw the result of colonization, mm. that's what I was going to say. Yeah. And so the, the one one's there, she's, she's there from 1972. Okay. She got stuck over there. And so, um, girl, they called her falling star. Mm. So anyway, um, she talks, the other one is a sheriff and she said, the white people let you let you do that and she said in our time kind of wow right yeah. and I was like wow yeah and it just made me think I was like okay look at this yeah you know and they're over there because they're there you know how they do uh-huh yeah, yeah. that's yeah that them. Yeah, that you know that that speaks to the and I, and I, we, I know we got to wrap up, but that speaks to the ancestral stuff. And I'm, I'm glad to come back and talk about some of that stuff because I've started Absolutely. tapping into that side of things as well. But um, in, in doing ancestral work and and healing some of the things that our ancestors and some of the wounds that our ancestors have never gotten healed, and so we're yes. still seeing. And that's one of the things like people say generational curse, and it's not actually a curse, yeah. but it is a generational pattern it's and it's trauma from the generations that we haven't healed Girl, right so that's a, we can do a whole other conversation on that i'm glad to come back. back to my church days i was about to jump up and shout because <laughs> 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 that's something else too mm. that i've been diving into because it's like i know that there's so many things and 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 we have had it the worst i tell yeah. people i'm like yeah other people have had slavery yes they have you know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And I had actually found out that um, the first lady that they killed, that they hanged in my hometown in Savannah uh -huh. was an Irish indentured servant. Mm. Her and her boyfriend um, killed their master. <laughs> so wow. they all did. And I was like, wow, that's so interesting, you know, because I yeah. love history and stuff, right? Uh -huh. but, it, but it's amazing when you see the results of colonization all over yeah. the world. Yeah. And they use religion to do it. It's a huge, huge And they got thing. us so hard. And the thing mm. is, is they not only got us, but they got Africa that way. They got Africa. They got a whole bunch of third you world You see countries. that, those big old white that. Jesuses that they have up? I, yeah. I can't even, I can't with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh wow. This has been such a great conversation, <laughs> Tammy. I'm, like I said, I'm I'm so open to, to coming back and talking about a few other topics. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Do you have any any wrap-up questions for me? Um, yes, I have to ask you the question that I ask everyone before we leave. Um, matter of fact, what I want you to do is I want you to um say something to the person that you know that you work with. So mm -hmm. like if it's a person that the type of person that you're working with. Yeah. I want you to say something to encourage them. And then I also want you to answer this question. Uh, if there was anything in the world that you could change, what would mm -hmm. that be? Oh, goodness. And anything that you're doing, like if you yeah. have something that you're enrolling or something you want to, you know, put out there, you can do that. This time. If there was anything in the world that I could change, you know, I'd, I want people to be more curious than more judgmental. Mm. You know, there's always going to be light and dark. That's just who we are. And I think it'd be, you know, say, oh, I don't want any darkness or anything. That, that's, you know, um, that's but I, I would want, yeah, you know, and of course uh, we don't want anger. We don't want people to be abused and all those kind of things. That's kind of a, a given, but, you know, I, I, I'd want people to be more curious and ask questions 
you know, um, instead of jumping to conclusions or instead of making assumptions, um, because that's how we get to change things and that's how we all get to grow. Um, so outside of the big things that, you know, and I'm sure you get a lot of those big things, but, you know, that's people want to change, but I, I'd want to see that changed um, in the world. And it ties into the people that I want to talk to, the people that I want to work with. Um, we've got messages and stories that need to get out there. And so for all of you who have been thinking, well, you know, who am I to say this? Who am I to tell my story? Who am I to speak up? Nice. The time is now for you to, to speak up and to be that trailblazer, to be that advocate. You have that message, that inner nudge for a reason. Um, six years ago, I started talking about this thing called an in rising. Yes. And the in rising, you know, we've had of these uprisings and out you know, rages and all those things happening. And it's always been external. And what we're seeing now is an in rising where people's intuition and our inner self is wanting more. Yes. And so if you've got that nudge, follow it and nurture it. And one of the things that we're doing, um, we're, I'm getting ready to do something called divinity lessons. Oh, nice. And it's, it's, it's us learning about our divinity. And mm -hmm. so I've got, I mean, talking with other women, I don't know everything. And I'm on a journey. I don't have all the answers. I don't need to have all the answers, no. but I've got some really great questions. And so, you know, um, one of the first people that we're going to have is a woman that's going to talk about tarot because we've been conditioned that tarot is the demonic and da, 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 da. We don't know. I know. But, you know, a lot of us don't know because we've never really learned about it. We've never learned about African shamanism. We've never learned about the deities, right? The, the deities with the small g because in our Eurocentric worldview, God with the capital G is the only God that exists. And no, he's actually a small g God. His name is Yahweh. That's the God of the Bible, right? But we've given him that title of God as if there's no other deities ever have ever existed. And that's not even true. That even, even the Bible says you should have no other gods before me, indicating that there are other gods, right? But do, do this well, whole thing about the divinity lessons is that our opportunity to come together and it's specifically for women of color in a safe space to ask questions and explore these different ways that we can connect to our own divine. Yes. I think yeah. that is, that is so powerful. And, and yeah. You know what? And I have gotten so many answers to that question that, I mean, really, and every time I get an answer, it's, they're all different yeah. and they're all amazing. Like and, I had and, one yeah, lady and, that as, said, it, as it should be. <laughs> one lady said nothing. As it should and be. I, right? I was like, you know, that's pretty good. So I, I just thought about that. But that's that's powerful, you know, because we need spaces like that. We do. You know why? Because like I tell you, I was hard pressed to find a medium of color, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I started, you know, going on a search to look just to see. Yeah. You know, because I, I've, like I said, I, I've interviewed medium psychics, channelers, you know, uh -huh. you name it. they've been on my virtual couch and it's been amazing to do yeah. that, you know, but yeah. I wanted to showcase, you know, some women of color that mm -hmm. are in this, this arena because, yeah. you know, they, they have these gatekeepers you know, and a lot of times what I'm noticing is they have it for us. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, and I, I don't know if this is a me thing and I, I, I just want to share it with you just because we're on this, 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 this space. But I had a thing about, you know, these, these, um, these people that are doing shamanism that are not indigenous, indigenous mm -hmm. at, in any way. Yeah. And that bothered me. And so I wanted, I was trying to figure out why it bothered me so much. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And it, should I be bothered by that? Because it's like, you know, I, and I, I, for me, it almost feels like they steal so much, you know, cultural mm -hmm. appropriations. Yeah. They steal so much. And it's like, you know, you know, and so I, I actually, because somebody actually invited me to something and I looked and I was like, oh no, see, no, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, and so I, I thought I was like, well, am I being, you know, am I being? I, I think it's just our desire to have something that, that, that we connect with in a, in a different way. Right. You know, I mean, when I, because for, I didn't even realize there was a whole separate thing for, for African shamanism. Yes. 
Right. And but I was researching because I was fascinated by it. But then, you know, when I was taking a look for for shamans to work with, I got a lot of South African shamans who don't look like us. Yep. And, and they're and they're teaching and they're leading things. And I'm like, well, where are the people that look like me? You know, where are the people that have ties to my ancestors and my culture? You know, I already am pissed about the fact that I can't go back 10 generations and find my people. Yes. Right. So, yeah, I, I think that's what rubs us is, you know, you you start to see where things are getting. Wiped. And I'm sorry, we I know we got to wrap up, but, you know, we, we you know, we see how much of us has been wiped out. Yes. And we don't want to perpetuate that. We really want something that's going to establish and solidify with who we are and who we have been as a people. And that's OK. Yes, yeah, because because it really is, you know, to me, it's almost like, like it was like an underground movement mm -hmm. because we always had our people that did these things. We we all know that. Yeah, you know, you, you had sister so and so because she she could read you, mm -hmm. you know, and then you had sis, you know sister so and so, you know, there this one was the prophet, so you know yeah. they're gonna tell you blah 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 and all this stuff. But we always had these things. We always we had these people. Mm -hmm. in our communities and stuff but it's almost like we've been you know underground we've been brainwashed to to call it something else than what it is you know we we call it we call it deep we've been told that it was demonic when it was actually just spirit it was actually yeah. just who we are i just so. want to dispel those myths that's what yeah. i am doing yeah that's what but, but that's so what that's you that's what you are doing yeah, that's what you are doing by having these conversations and yeah. by taking, you know, blazing a trail for people to tell their stories. So I really appreciate you, um, you know, creating this opportunity to share and to to put this out into the the universe so people can find it and they can embark on their own journey. Yes, yes. Thank you. And, you know, I appreciate you because I've been watching you <laughs> and I've been waiting to get you on my virtual couch. And I'm so grateful that you have come. Yeah. Um, we're going to land this plane though. And I'm <laughs> super, super, super excited that we had this conversation. And I hope that, you know, you, you guys that are listening and watching, you know, have gotten so much out of it because I have, <laughs> I'm ready to go back and watch again and take notes, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming and thank you all for watching, joining, listening, and make sure that you like, share, and subscribe wherever you get to catch this. Um, it's on Spotify, Apple, Google, anywhere that you can get your podcast. iHeartRadio, I found out it was on Audibles. I'm super excited. <laughs> so anywhere that you can get your podcast, you can listen to this one. Um, and also you can watch it on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And wherever you're watching it, you can see you'll, you'll get her um, details in the show notes. And that is, to me, that's amazing that we have this platform that we can do this, you know, that I can talk to you across the country and people around the world can watch us. I think it's just nothing short of amazing. And to me, that's God. Yeah. yeah. So again, thank you for watching, listening, wherever you are in the world. And I hope that your day is magical. Bye now.